Hi, uh, my name is Lahinia Luihare, and I'm a co-PI on the California Current Ecosystem LTER, and I'll be talking a little bit about DDT in the CCE. So first, a few site updates. We have, we're excited to have seven new CCE faculty associates join uh, the CCLTER, and um, they're listed here and they're um, shown uh, below. The first ever female Cal Coffee CCE time series cruise, all female <laughs> cruise went out uh, last year in 2020. And actually immediately prior to that was a student LTR cruise. And those two cruises were actually the first UNOS cruises to operate under the new um, COVID protocols. The third of, in our series of cruises for this current funding period, um, process cruises went out this summer uh, in 2021. We were lucky to get some NSF funding to work um, on the invertebrate collections, invertebrate collections at SIO. And then Mark Oman will continue as lead PI on the LTR until the renewal is submitted next year when Kathy Barbo will assume uh, the leadership role. So there's a variety of different aspects of human environment interactions that are studied in the LTR, primarily from a climate change perspective. But we wanted to talk a little bit about some new work that we're thinking about, and that's on the legacy of DDT in the area. So many of you know about the DDT problem, but some of you may not know that Montrose Chemical Company, the largest DDT manufacturer in the world, was um, situated in Los Angeles. And they're notorious for having dumped uh, DDT waste into the wastewater system that ultimately went out of White Point's outfall onto the Palos Verdes coastal shelf such that such that, that shelf was actually designated a Superfund site in the 1990s. It's long been believed that the Palos Verdes DDT contamination is the source of the very high body burden of DDT that we find in top predators, primarily marine mammals in this region. And it's not just that these predators have high body burdens, but new data shows that this high body burden of DDTA, DDT is actually highly correlated with adverse health impacts in these organisms. However, recently attention has been refocused on the problem uh, because we know that Montrose also commissioned two salvage companies to take DDT waste out offshore and dump it at two designated sites, legally dump it at two designated sites between Los Angeles and Catalina. And recent visits to one of these sites provides visual evidence for the existence of this dump site and an acoustic survey showed that actually at least one of these dump sites is larger than what was um, noted as the designated area and does actually encroach into state waters. We were lucky enough uh, during this most recent LTR cruise to be able to collect some samples from the site. This slide shows the three major known DDT dump sites in the area. And so the Superfund site sits in about 100 meters of water off the Palos Verde shelf. And as a result, it's received a lot more attention and study than the two deep dump sites, uh, one in San Pedro Basin, the other uh, near Santa Monica Basin, uh, both of which are in 900 meters of water and therefore pretty inaccessible. So only a few studies have been to these dump sites. And what's really not well known is whether any of the DDT that's accumulating in these dump sites may be important for the high DDT body burdens that we see for um, organisms in the Southern California Bight region of the CCLTR uh, domain. So we were lucky enough during this summer's cruise to be able to sample the site. Um, and in the dashed circle, you see the designated dump region between Catalina and LA. The red um, blob is our boat. And we did a couple of different sample collection initiatives within this region and expanded it out to include the region that the acoustic surveys suggested were important. Our primary goal was to collect biomass samples from about 50 to 100 meters above bottom to sample mesopelagic organisms. And this figure shows examples of the types of organisms that we collected in these nets that are unique to this and feed at these depths. We also collected water samples and we also collected sediment samples from about 50 to 100 meters above depth, uh, about the bottom, sorry, suspended sediment samples, because we think DDTA contaminated sediments once resuspended would be the primary source of DDT entering these um, mesopelagic food webs. So with these samples and others, what we're doing right now is first we want to establish the contaminant fingerprint of these mesopelagic organisms as well as sediment samples that we collected at these sites on a separate um, cruise. 
uh, once we identify a chemical fingerprint that's unique to this site, then we can actually definitively say whether DDT from this region is actually getting into the upper food webs um, in, in the Southern California Bight. We're also lucky to have a long-term data set from the CC from the Cal Coffee program that allows us to potentially trace um, the time series, time history of DDT in these mesopelagic food webs near these sites. And ultimately, the question we want to ask is if these uh, if these mesopelagic um, organisms are contaminated with DDT, how do they connect to the food webs of the upper ocean that are relevant from the from the perspective of human consumption of fish, and also these marine mammals and higher trophic predators that we were discussing previously. So I'm going to end there, and I'll be taking questions later.